eggs on cocotte. It's kind of poached eggs, but technically not because poached eggs are supposed to be directly in the cooking liquid. And since these are cooked in a vessel, this being a ramekin set in the cooking water, I'm classifying it as poached-esque because the end result should be the same as a poached egg, just in a dish instead of floating around in the cooking liquid. The standard on cocotte is slightly larger than a ramekin, like you could fit two eggs in it. Uh, and the traditional recipe is mostly cream and cheese, and sometimes it's baked. But this is a specialty item, and I don't expect a lot of people to have this, so I'm using ramekins. And firing up the oven for just a few eggs seems like a lot of energy to use, so I'm demoing a stovetop method. First, the fun part, making your flavor combinations. Pull out every condiment and sauce you have or can think of and start creating concoctions. This is really fun to play around with. Now, I'm gonna demo a few options to give you some inspiration. Every ramekin needs to be oiled with olive oil, butter, sesame oil, ghee, lard, schmaltz. It needs something. For my first combo, I'm using olive oil and leftover yogurt that's spiced with cumin and garlic. I'm covering the bottom of the ramekin with the yogurt, adding the egg, and adding more yogurt on top and garnishing with a few capers, or more than a few capers, and grated batargo, which is salted cured fish roe. The next one gets olive oil, mozzarella cheese, leftover sauteed mushrooms, egg, more mushrooms, and more mozzarella. My third combo starts with sesame oil, then a loose mixture of gochujang, soy sauce, and a tad more sesame oil, which really should have been toasted sesame oil, and another drizzle of sesame oil. The fourth combo starts with bacon fat, then leftover mushrooms, half a slice of deli ham torn into bits and scattered around, then the egg, and I'm trying something new here. Since we always struggle with cooking the whites long enough, but then overcooking the yolks. I'm just adding the egg whites and I'll add the yolks later in the cooking process. Then a little more ham and some Parmesan cheese. My fifth combo is lard again because it's already on the pastry brush and then leftover caramelized onions from a pasta dish. And I'm doing the separated um, egg white thing again. Hopefully by now your imagination is going crazy with the combinations you can come up with for this. For the cooking technique, will bring about half an inch of water to a light simmer. You'll need a pot or a pan with straight sides since we'll cover it and you'll want enough clearance over the ramekins to keep the steam contained in the lid. I always place a ramekin in the pan while pouring the water to make sure I don't overfill it. The water levels will rise as more ramekins get added and it shouldn't go higher than halfway up the ramekin. Bring the water to the same heat level as with any other poached egg where you see steam, and you have little bubbles breaking to the top. We'll cover the pot and let the water cook from below and the steam cook from the top. And you will actually probably hear your ramekins chattering in the pan. If you do separate the yolk from the white, add it in after just two to three minutes and add more toppings if you want and recover. This was pretty low heat and it took nine minutes before I felt like the whites were cooked enough. But depending on your heat level and what's going on in your setup, check every two minutes. And just like with everything else, stop when it looks almost done, but not quite. And this is where I decided to stop. I'm really glad I did. It was perfect. Once one egg was firm, I knew that most all of them would be right behind it. Remember, they'll keep cooking just a little bit more even after you remove them from the pot. You'll need tongs or oven mitts to help get them out of the water. They will be very hot. The tongs were scary for me because it's not a solid grip. So I just used oven mitts. The goal is the same, cooked whites and molten yolks. So let's see how we did. Digging into the yogurt and caper combo. It is perfect. Creamy whites and molten yolks. To eat, you can dip bread into it or spoon it out and spread it on the bread. Now my gochujang overcooked, it was at the top of the pan, which always gets more heat than other parts of the cooktop. Next, the mushrooms and mozzarella. This one was watery and I can't tell if it's an uncooked egg white or just extra water from the lid or the cheese. I'm pretty sure it's water and not egg white simply because all the others were cooked through. Although there is a possibility that the cheese was somehow thick enough to insulate the egg from cooking. So I guess keep that in mind um, that if you do want to use a cheese, like a finer shredded cheese is probably better for this. Next, in the corner, the caramelized onion and Parmesan combo. This is absolutely perfect. This is one where I added the yolk a couple minutes into the cooking process. So if you're comfortable with that, the whole process of separating the yolk from the whites and then remembering to add the yolks, 
I say it's a winner. And yes, try this with all of the thicker sauce recipes too. And of course, the ham and mushroom also ends up being perfect because it too had its yolk added later. Now, assuming you don't have to cook anything to add to the ramekins, this comes together really quickly. And since you can use just a little bit of a lot of things, you can cook a lot of variety at one time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.